I went to Paradise, California after the fire and I came back a changed person. I'll share my experience and you won't believe these incredible images from there. Welcome to my channel. I'm Liz Amazing and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence and live amazing. And you definitely need to be able to push past fear and build confidence if you're trying to recover from having lost your home in a fire or really any kind of devastating personal setback. And that's why I decided to make this video about visiting Paradise, California after the fire, because I think it may be helpful to you if you're going through any kind of hard times. I've been staying at a campground that's an hour away from Paradise, California. and. I keep running into people. Um, I've had campground neighbors that were affected by the fire and talked to so many people and they just sound like they have post-traumatic stress disorder because I'm sure they do. There are people still living in the fairgrounds. There was a camper across from me living in a tent and he was watching TV all day and I mentioned something to one of my neighbors. I thought, well, it's crazy to come out to this beautiful campground where there's a lake and there's all this stuff to do to just watch TV. And she said, oh, well, he's probably from paradise. He probably lost his home and he's just, you know, living out of his car. And I'm like, well, that really puts it in perspective, right? And when I meet somebody and they tell me that they have lived through the fire, and of course I, I say I'm sorry and, and, and you know, and I commiserate with them, I don't think I really have any concept. So my point of going to paradise is so that I can understand the impact of this fire so I can see it for myself and go, wow. Wow is right. So the Paradise Fire was the deadliest wildfire in all of California history, and in fact the deadliest wildfire in the last hundred years in the whole country. The fire just incinerated Paradise. I've never seen a vehicle this burned out. I mean, this is sitting right when you enter Paradise, and I mean, just so completely firebombed. I mean, the tread, there's not even any sign of the tread. And this is interesting. I couldn't understand what this was at first, and then I realized these are the steel belts from steel belted radials. All of Paradise has this war zone kind of feel about it, and these burned out vehicles are pretty common, just kind of scattered throughout town. The fire started November 8th, 2018, and it took 17 days to contain it, but Paradise burned in like the first five to six hours. It was a really windy day, and the the winds just fanned the flames, and you can see that the fire just cut super, super hot, just melting glass. These vehicles just thoroughly, thoroughly burned, and I have just never seen something like it where the only thing left is just sort of a metal shell, and even the steering wheel just vaporized. So there's definitely a lot of emotions coming up for me as I'm here and I see too many scenes like this. Too many burnt out scenes, scenes of rubble. I saw a burned out bicycle and these cars and I'm like, oh my gosh, fire is so powerful. And I'm definitely feeling the devastation that they must feel. Over 50,000 people were evacuated ahead of this fire, and most had very, very short notice. And before the fire was finally out, 17 days later, it actually was so big it could be seen from outer space. The plume of it, the smoke plume, could be seen from that far away. It ended up taking over 5,500 firefighters to try and put it out. They used over 600 engines. There was over 100 bulldozers. And it was like a whole army 
trying to put this fire out. The fire started because there was a faulty transmission line, but you know, with the winds and the super dry conditions, this fire spread to 240 square miles. So now this is the business district of Paradise. Imagine what used to be here because Paradise lost in like the first four hours, 95% of all its buildings, population of 26,000 and then boom, imagine losing almost every building. So mostly it's been cleaned up. There'll be some that's, you know, there's some rubble, but mostly it's just parking pad after parking pad that used to be offices and medical plazas and churches. They lost a grocery store. They lost five public schools. It's just mind boggling to see how much was gone. So many businesses. Imagine if you had started a business and it's your life work and it's just gone. So this is right downtown, probably the heart of town because this building looks older, probably built in the 50s or 60s. I can't imagine what it must be like to have built a business over decades, maybe a family business, and to have lost it. Worse than that is the loss of lives. 85 people died in the fire. The fire just came so fast. Some people died in traffic trying to get out of town. Some people died trying to outrun the fire. On top of that, 10 of the 18 dental offices in town were destroyed by the fire, so that made it harder to find records to identify the bodies. Four communities were affected and there were a total of 18,000 buildings destroyed. So what happens when there's a fire of this magnitude is the survivors scatter. They just go all over the place. And so the town really is very desolate. In fact, of the 26,000 population, only 10% are here now. I see the occasional camper and somebody, you know, living amongst their burned out ruins, but most people are gone. Think about it, you know, if you're, if you survived, maybe your place of business didn't or your customers didn't. This is another burned out building. This looks like it was a restaurant, maybe a fast food place. So it's just going to take a long, long time for paradise to come back. It needs people to live here. But of course, people need to have places to work and they need places to live. This is the driveway of one of the many burned out homes in Paradise. And this is what's left of the garage. It's really hard to recognize anything. Imagine losing your home in a fire and you come back and this is what it looks like. This is your front porch. And you think, well, you're going to come back and you're going to sift through and find things. But this fire was so intense. There's really nothing left but ash. The only things that seem to have survived are, you know, a gun safe and a couple filing cabinets and that's it. The rest of it is just gone. Of all those buildings destroyed, 10,000 were single family homes. So entire neighborhoods were wiped out. But now I'm starting to see signs of rebuilding. I'm starting to see a little bit of construction and some of the lots are being scraped clean. In fact, more and more as I drove around, I could see these lots being scraped clean. So that gives me hope. I can really feel the power of community, the power of connection, the power of the human spirit as everybody is gathering together to rebuild paradise. I've seen several signs talking about we will rebuild the ridge. We will come back. We are rising strong because truly stronger than the power of fire is the power of human spirit. If you're going through any kind of hard times now, tough times, challenging times, know that the number one thing you can do for yourself to lift yourself up is to lift others up. If you feel moved to donate to Paradise, California, I spoke to the mayor to get the name of the right organization. It is the North Valley Community Foundation, and I'll have a link in the comments. 
And if you want to experience the power of human connection, the human spirit, then join the A team. Just push on the subscribe button. And if you liked this video, you'll love the next one. I'll see you in the next video.